Alrighty, Fire Dog is back again, and finally today I have the review for you of one of the most impressive headphones I have ever tried to date. And that is, of course, none other than the brand new flagship headphones of the Audio Technica brand, the Audio Technica ATH ADX 5000s. These are, like I said, their newest flagships, and for $2,000, they better don't roll be as impressive as these are priced. And for the most part, I'm definitely very impressed with them. There's a couple of things I think should still be improved upon, but in comparison to how much they have improved over their previous lineup and my previous complaints, I am ecstatic. Anywho, of course, starting with the construction and then working my way down, the construction of the Audio Technicas, in all honesty, are very nice. They are very nice and impressive. Audio Technica has gone away from using plastic on their flagship headphones, unlike a certain other one, and instead uses a magnesium compound that maintains the lightweightness of, you know, the cheap plastic, but also keeps it solid feeling and just overall more durable than plastic. So a very good kudos to Audio Technica on that regard. So as you can see, and it's something I personally am very appreciative of, is they have gotten rid of the useless uh, split headband thingies that went right here. If you watch pretty much any of my previous Audio Technica reviews or unboxings, you know my opinions on those. So to see them, you know, actually using their headband as the support, I think is a very good thing they've gone to. They have maintained their wing support system, which is the dual band right here, that does wonderful job at just giving you that just Goldilocks area of clamping force. It is a little bit more snug than the previous Audio Technica models, but not in a bad way. It just sits a little bit more firm on your head, so that way when you move or turn, nothing moves, nothing does any of that at all whatsoever. Now, the complaint I do have with the frame, it is actually one I do personally find unacceptable, is that this thing creaks very badly. And for $2,000, that is unacceptable. You could do something here or wherever the creaking is coming from to get rid of that. Moving down, they've also gone away from that very strong V shape that most of the previous Audio Technica headphones have, at least the ones I've reviewed, and they've now gone for the more universal headphone approach. So now you can go, you know, your traditional V, but more of a flathead as well. You have all this area of flexibility versus the previous models doing that's about it. That's all you got. All you have is the headphone expansion itself. For people like me who has a very square head, I'm really appreciative of that. A very annoying part I had with the W5000s, W1000s, etc. is that, especially on the top of the ears, it kind of bulged out like that, so I never could get a good seal. And then lastly, on the construction, as you move down, they have replaceable cables. Detachable, replaceable cables. Thank you! That is such an important and I wish become staple thing I think all headphones should have. With the current technology this year, the loss that you get from doing hardwired to detachable, I think it should be so minimal over the convenience and potential profit for your companies of having a detachable cable. Now, with that being said, as good as that is and as glad as I am that the Audio-Technica uh, ADX 5Ks have that, a negative I do have with them is that they are very proprietary. Um, so if you do want a replaceable cable, and I'll use the uh, balance cable they sent me only for, and actually I've got to touch on that, in the unboxing video, I did show the balance cable they sent me. That is only sent to me for the review and meet purposes. If you wish to buy that cable, you will have to pay $350 for that extra. So, and let me touch on that note. That, I compete these headphones and compare these headphones with the Sennheiser HD 800S quite a bit. And starting off, it's $1,700 versus $2,000. But with that balance cable that Sennheiser does give uh, out of the bat, they give you the uh, balance cable with the uh, HD800Ss, the bringing these up to close to $2,400 may make that a very difficult um, toss-up for those who are considering these headphones over the HD800Ss. Now moving on to the comfort. So they've already really improved the build quality of the Audio-Technica ADX 5000s over their predecessors. But the comfort, I can definitely attest they have really improved as well. 
I can wear these and have for more than six hour period at a time without any discomfort, without having to adjust them, without having to let my ears take a breather. It's just the, my beloved Alcantara pads and headband. The headband is also Alcantara, but it's, there's no, um, it's literally just Alcantara on metal. There's no uh, extra cushion in that at all. But the pads have just the right amount of Goldilocks level of uh, support and uh, density that it conforms to my head, but also keeps my ears, my big old ears, from touching the driver casings on the inside. I really appreciate that. That was one of my big complaints with another top of line headphone, the Odyssey LCD 2s, is that the padding was so comfortable, but it didn't have enough density, so my ears were constantly scratching. I use that word intentionally, the uh, phasers, which did lead to some discomfort. And that is not present at all on the ADX 5Ks. In all honesty, I don't really have any complaints with the comfort of the Audio Technica ADX 5Ks. They did a spot on job, so very well done. Now, moving on to what you all care the most about, and that is the sound quality. So, how does the sound quality of the new flagship? of the Audio-Technica brand sound. And in my experience from the about roughly one month I've had with them is they have really improved the overall sound characteristics and detail retrieval and just finesse over their even previous flagship, the W5000. They're also nowhere near as amplifier picky. I tried these with tube amps, solid states, um, now, they were on the higher end spectrum as some of the best gear you can get. Um, and, of course, I'll leave the link to my full written review in the description box down below that has a list of every piece of equipment I tried them with. And, yes, I did mix and match amps and DAX with these during my time with them to get different comparisons and make sure the results I got is wasn't just bias on a particular amp setup. Now, with that being said... The imaging and sound stage on the ADX 5Ks is very impressive. It's not a big sound stage. It is not. In fact, for an, a very open back headphone, it's actually kind of a smaller sound stage. If I had to kind of compare it to something, it'd be like um, a jazz slash comedy club kind of thing. Not like a big stadium, but like an actual club that has kind of a wraparound stage. You can still discern each individual piece and nothing really gets in the way of anything else. But it's not that far out. If everything still sounds nice and close and very personal. I wouldn't call it an intimate sound just because this is a very analytical headphone, not a musical one. But it's it's definitely more closer than, especially, than an open back headphones are expected to sound. So that is a, a note that some people who are A, B, and this and the HD 800s might leave off on. Now, in my full written review, which like I said is linked in the description down below, I link... Uh, several different videos that describe the soundstage I'm getting at or talking about. And one of them is The Nights by Avish, Avasi. I don't know how to pronounce his name. It's A-V-I-C-I-I. -I -I. And that is a very good song, especially if you have an actual like a CD quality version, not necessarily the YouTube one that I linked. But it does a good job of, you know, it has several moving pieces and nothing's like directly in front of you. Kind of Everything's kind of spaced out in different formats. That does a great job in describing the ADX 5Ks. And with that, one of the things that the ADX 5Ks can definitely compete with the HD 800 on is the imaging. When you listen to these, oh, you are right at the experience. You are listening to and you are almost watching whatever's happening in front of you, whether it be a violin solo. Movies are pretty good. However, with again, with the bass, and I'll touch on that here in a bit, though the bass is much more impressive on these than the HD 800Ss, it's still not quite powerful level and again I'll touch on that here soon but you are the, just the imaging factor is just amazing on the 5k's they have done a wonderful like pinpoint job to ensure that every bit of detail that a song is showcasing is being replicated by these headphones now let me move on to more of the individual aspects so maybe I can describe or hopefully I can describe what I'm trying to explain a little bit better so starting with the treble and then going down the treble on the ADX 5Ks is just stunningly beautiful. The treble on these is probably some of the most beautiful I have ever, ever heard, regardless of price. It's not a bright headphone by any means, but it is slightly 
brighter than neutral. I would say overall it's a neutral sound, but it is slightly brighter with this treble um, clarity. Extension is wonderful. It extends however high you want a music to go, but it doesn't quite get piercing. There are some recordings and some songs that you just don't really have a choice in the matter of getting there. But with the ADX5Ks, it just maintains linearity, if that's a word. It's so gorgeous to listen to. Um, a good song, I've it's become a new staple for me, even more than the uh, Diva Dance, which is still a great song. I linked it in my full written review. But it's called A, Mo a Moonfield Sky. I don't know who originally, or rather who created that particular piece. It is the instrumental violin and piano version, linked in my uh, written review. But it is just so emotionally filled song. And I always compare treble to looking into someone's eyes. Yes, I've always been raised to make eye contact when you're talking to somebody, but and but it describes treble so well because it gives you a hint. You can get so much emotion out of someone's eyes, and with these, you can just whether it be a sad song like "A Moonfield Sky" is, or a very energetic song um, that's in "The Storm" by uh, Yanni, and I I kind of give a snippet of the violinist. I can't pronounce his name. I'm not even going to try because I will butcher it. But it's linked. It's just so energy filled, and you get that in these. Anything, all treble pieces just transfers that energy and that excitement or that sadness that comes through with the higher pitched notes. It, it, I just can't speak highly enough of the treble. It is just so nicely detailed and revealing. I, I really think for those of you who like treble focused pieces, you should really look into the ADX 5Ks because to my ears, I can't think of something I've heard better. Now, moving on to the mids. The mids are very accurate. They're, they have a lot of body to them. And, and the, the chart actually shows them as recessed. If you remember my uh, chart I showed in my unboxing. But I have to argue with that. It's I, won't, I don't want to say they're forward because I don't think they're very neutral, I think, in the uh, mids. But they're almost focused on. Like when you're listening to a good saxophone piece or vocals. Vocals sound very, very good on the ADX 5Ks. They have nice body to them, and you can, regardless if it's male or female, they just, they have so much air. Like, you can almost, like, hear and feel the breath that comes from the artists. It's just so impressive to listen to. Without being a warm headphone and getting to that bias that I honestly have with warm headphones in the mid-range, especially for those of you who like guitar music, without like the bass side, but just mid-range guitars, just does really good on these. Like you fully can enjoy like the reverb of a, acoustic guitar, electric, depends on the tuning, but an acoustic guitar or cellos just does so good on here. It's just, you can just relax while listening to it. But at the same time, it's not a musical headphone. Please let me explain that the, these are not a musical headphone. They are very analytical. They will put a spotlight on every little minute detail of a song versus kind of taking a backstage and just letting the music come to you enjoyably. It wants to really focus on detail retrieval. But for the most part on these, I'm, I do love the mids. It's not something I would get crazy about, um, but for in comparison to the rest of them, I think they did a really overall solid job on the mid-range. They really, really did. Now moving to the bass, the bass is like the heartbeat of the music. It keeps everything in pace, it keeps, it makes things sound full. And that is one area that is lacking on the HD 800S's, is though the bass is very tight, it's very controlled, it's um, punchy, but it's not heavy. It doesn't have that oomph when you really want it to. That is where these do just beat the HD 800S's in spades. They have all the same control. All of the control, finesse, and tightness of the HD 800S's, but they have much harder impact. It's still by no means, no means, a heavy bass headphone. It's still an open back, so there's only so much open backs can do with bass response, but in comparison to the HD 800S and actually a lot of other open back headphones, these have a very nice hitting bass. It's, it's a very full sounding. For an analytical headphone, I think they've hit the spot, that, that sweet spot. I'm very satisfied in how heavy the bass is to hit, but I still get all that control and that reference quality I'm getting with these.
and I linked a few songs in my written review that really does a good job describing the bass punch on these that I really recommend you check out. Um, preferably if you have a better formatted, because YouTube really uh, doesn't format the music too well that you can get the full benefit of the mastering of it. It does a good job of comparing what I'm trying to get out of here. But guys, to some of my thoughts on the Audio-Technica flagship ATH ADX 5000s, they are a wonderfully full sounding reference class headphone. I really do think those of you who are looking for a HD800S or similar reference class headphones should really keep an eye out for these. They make a great rival. The HD800, for my ears, I like the fullness of these better. But there are certain aspects and certain genres that the HD800s just still I would I can't get rid of those either. These are more alike than they are different, and that makes for a great competition. My issue is, and not issue really, it's more of a worry, is that these are a lot more expensive. With a balanced cable, these are almost twenty-four hundred dollars, whereas the HD800Ss are only seventeen hundred. So that difference in price, even in audiophile standards, that's a big gap to kind of justify. So, so for those of you looking for a reference class in-game headphone, definitely keep these in your mind. I think you'll be rather surprised with Audio-Technica's new, uh, new flagship. It's, it's quite impressive and I will truly miss this headphone. I, in all honesty, in the time I have had these, in about a month, and directly having the HD800Ss and these headphones sit next to each other, I went to these about 99% of the time. The soundstage is notably smaller than the 800s, but just the overall more full, fuller sound did more for me. But in that same argument, I have a pair of Oppo PM1s, finally now, I finally got those, that feel my musical uh, need more than any headphones. So that's where these go hand in hand. But anyway, guys, uh, if you have any questions or if there's anything I may have missed, uh, please feel free to ask me any questions you have. I very happily, and I actually love, I truly do love answering your questions. I can't guarantee I can answer all of them or have the answers, but I'll at least try my best to get you those answers. And I appreciate you all taking the time out of your day to at least ask me and value my opinion for what it's worth. But anyway, guys, as always, my name is Army Fire Dog. It has truly, truly been a pleasure, but most importantly, and please I ask my friends, stay safe.